Sarah Badway here from Horse Racing Nation, joined by Caitlin Free, Churchill Downs racing analyst, uh, international racing expert, I would say. And that's kind of why I'm so excited to talk to you about the Breeders' Cup, Cup Turf Sprint. So I'm really looking forward to getting all of your insight on some of these international invaders in this full field. Honestly, I'm so glad that you picked me for this race because, believe it or not, this is actually my favorite Breeders' Cup race. So when you asked me and we were kind of like, you told me, you know, either the turf or the turf sprint was kind of in your mind. Um, I was like, oh, I want to do the turf sprint. <laughs> I, just, I love this race. Um, I've always been a big Golden Pal fan. Um, I really liked him from the time he was a foal. And there's just been so many cool horses win this race. And I think honestly, out of all the cards on the Breeders' Cup Saturday, I think this is the, the race where you have the most opportunity to make money because so many weird things happen in this race. Well, that's kind of the first question I had for you because are, are we trying to beat Golden Pal? Because I feel like every time he runs, there's kind of that argument of like, today's the day that Golden Pal is going down. And it hasn't happened yet. It, it's happened overseas, but he's undefeated still in the U.S. And I think, you know, two to one on that morning line, there's, there's a lot of other ways to go in a field like this. There's a lot of cases you can make for some other very exciting horses with uh, very detailed resumes. but he's tough because he has that gate speed and that and that early advantage on all of these horses so i feel like you have to very quickly on uh, early on make a decision about what are you doing with him yeah and i mean it seems like a lot of the european horses kind of lack the gate speed that he has he doesn't seem to have that punch over in europe which i've always found to be strange I don't know what it is about here in the States that is so different from Europe for this horse. And I mean, keep in mind, he ran second at Royal Ascot when he was a juvenile, I believe. So it's not like he's been a total slouch over there. I mean, things happened last time out and he totally got left in the gate um, when he was at Royal Ascot last time. So I uh, kind of draw a line through that one. But he, uh, honestly, as much gate speed as he has, he's unbeaten here. He loves Keeneland. It would be illogical to try to beat him, but I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me who you're using to give it your best shot because this is one of the tougher fields that he's faced. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And this race has a very European feel to me because there's so many Euros shipping in for this race. And we have some good turf spreaders here in the United States. You know, Brianna Resme Red have very good resumes this year, but I'm looking to Highfield Princess to try to beat Golden Pal in this race. She's trained for this race all year. They've had it circled on the calendar since the spring. So she's been pointing to this race so long. She got a little bit of time off, but I believe she won something like five grade ones in like 60 days. And she shipped all over Europe. So the shipping won't be a problem. The only thing that people have some of a question mark about is the fact that she's never been around a turn. But based on her running, you know, line and the way she runs, I really, really think that going around a turn is going to benefit her. I think she's going to enjoy it. Um, she's also running the other direction, but she's ran the other direction before. So there's going to be some question marks about her. But we saw Philly and Glass Slippers a few years ago do the same thing. And that was only Euro that's won this race. I think she's better than Glass Slippers coming into this race. And she faces a really tough field, but they've trained her so well for this race she's been prepared for it for so long she's had a little bit of a break coming in off arguably the best form of anyone golden pal included so i just really like her in this race and i think they're going to bet the absolute crap out of golden pal so i expect her i expect you to get every bit of the seven to two of her morning line on her and i i, I just think she's all around the better horse in this spot which is saying something it definitely is. And, you know, looking at this race at first glance without really diving into these horses and seeing somebody else uh, at seven to two and Golden Pal being at two to one, immediately you're like, well, I have to take a look at this horse mm -hmm. because, I mean, Nick Tamaro, the morning line maker now for Keeneland, he's very well aware of Golden Pal's accomplishments. And so for him to make another horse a shortish price into the teeth of such a a logical, uh, probably a single for many. Um, it, it definitely made me take a look and be like, okay, there's maybe something to Highfield Princess here. Yep. So I'm glad that she was on your radar as well. 
There's a lot of other horses towards the inside. We have Creative Force. We have Flotus. We have Emirati Anna. We mm -hmm. have Go Bears Go coming back who ran here last year. We have Naval Crown. I mean, this race is just chock full of so many European horses. When you handicap those horses, I know this is something of a challenge for a lot of people that are used to their uh, typical, you know, pen and paper uh, PPs that they have over here in the U.S., whether that's Daily Racing Forum, Brisnet, whatever it is that you might use. Um, is there a strategy that you employ that you found to be more effective for these horses? Watching them. And ultimately, following that circuit has came so well in handy because I know these horses so well and I followed their careers. But honestly... I would say, because that information is not available in the form, as you've said, you really have to go back and you have to look at film. These films for these horses are easily accessible. Uh, you can find them, they're all over YouTube. You can find them on racing posts. So there's so many ways that you can look up the, the film in these races, but I have no doubt whether it's Highfield Princess winning or some of these other European horses, somebody is finishing in the try, if not the super. You just kind of have to figure out which one you want to take because they're all grade one quality horses. They're very good. So you just kind of have to figure out which ones you want to take a look at. But I, I would definitely say that film is going to be your best bet when it comes to these horses and really just being familiar with their careers and really just kind of watching them has come in handy for me. But I mean, you also have a horse like Campanelli. Uh, Go Bears Go is really interesting to me at 30 to one with Umberto Rispoli up. I, I thought that was, you know, different. So there's plenty of, I feel like every year when we run the turf sprint, more and more European horses come over. I think this is the most that we've seen in this race, and this is the best Europeans we've seen in this race. So the trend of so many U.S. horses winning this race is really going to start changing. And it definitely will. We don't have um, the same, you know, star in this race, mm -hmm. like Golden Pal, who I, I do believe is retiring after this year. Yeah, this is his final start. This will be it. So, I mean, this really opens up this division going forwards because he has been so dominant at these turf sprint distances. Um, Wesley Ward, as you mentioned, having another in here in Campanelli. He also has a Rest Me Red. I think of the three, obviously, it's Golden Pal for him. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, they're, they're no slouches either. No. Um, as far as a horse that I kind of liked is a, a totally insane long shot. I'm a little interested in Casadero, who's all the way to the outside in post 13. Flavio Prat aboard this one, 20 to one on the morning line. He he has a two-year-old. He was very highly touted for Steve Asmussen and Stone Street. Um, they, they thought a lot of him, and he had some really impressive starts as a juvenile, and then we kind of didn't see him for a little while, and he came back on the turf, and it was just such an odd move that I was like, well, what are we doing here? But then right. if you look at the pedigree a little bit, and it kind of fit. I mean, the dam had won on synthetic. A couple siblings had tried the turf, um, and he had a brutal trip in that allowance race as well and still got up for third. Then he goes over to Woodbine and he's going six furlongs and he gets a 101 buyer winning the grade two near tick. Um, and I mean, he, that was a, a decent field that he faced there and a huge step up figures wise for him. He's been working right. very well on the turf. I don't love the post, but I mean, if, if you like Golden Pal and you're looking for somebody underneath, I can make a pretty strong case for a horse like this at a big price. Absolutely. I agree with you. And I think there's several horses like Casadero in this race, which is what makes this race so tough to figure out if you're kind of playing those exotic type of wagers is, you know, you have your A's in Golden Pal and Highfield Princess. You have some B's in Campanelli, um, Arrest Me Red, Casadero, Bran, Casa Creed all the European horses. It's like, where do all those pieces fit? But I get what you're saying about Casadero. I don't like the post. I would have liked him much better without the post. But I think even with that gate draw in mind, I still think he can run a fantastic race in here because I think he's the type of horse that can maybe work out a trip from that wide of a draw. So I don't think it would be as much of a hindrance to him as it would be, you know, somebody like Golden Pal, for example, that wants to be just right there exactly and I mean I know that was a big concern when he was a juvenile breaking all the way from post 14 mm -hmm. and he got it done but I right. mean still it was it was definitely a, a worthy concern to have in a field like that is there anybody else in here that really caught your eyes one that you feel as though they have a really strong chance to win this race and that you'd be willing to bet to win or is it kind of all in on high field princess 
it's kind of those two for me on top. But the horse that I'm interested um, most, should there be an upset and a use for the second and third place spots, is going to be a Rest Me Red, especially if he holds anywhere near that 15 to 1 wearing line. I don't think you'll get 15 to 1 on him. I think you'll maybe get 10 to 1 on him because I, I just can't see him going off that long of a price. But I understand what Nick did. With these morning lines, you have the presence of obviously Highfield Princess and Golden Powell, Campanelli's eight to one in there. I believe she's the third choice. So, I mean, obviously, everybody else is going to float up, but I think a recipe red offers a lot of value in this race because, I mean, for so long in Kentucky, he was the top turf sprinter when Golden Powell was either in Europe or on break. And he's ran so well, he runs well everywhere in Kentucky, pretty much. Um, I think he's coming off of a loss, I believe. I haven't. Uh, I don't remember what he did last time out. I believe he lost or was second maybe at Kentucky Downs and maybe hasn't ran since. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, he was third. Yep. Third. Okay. So, but still a worthy performance. So, I mean, I, I just see so many scenarios where this horse absolutely fits into the trifecta. So maybe you like Golden Power Highfield Princess to win definitely arrest me red to fit in there somewhere underneath you just kind of got to find that bomb that you know is going to finish in third or fourth so he is the other one that i really want to use with those two but not necessarily for a winning spot i would think if somebody is going to upset those two he would be the most likely one along with maybe campanelli but i i prefer him a little bit more than her because i question some of the competition that she's kind of faced this year because really there's no very good female turf sprinters um and Caravelle is another one that I think could maybe chalk up into those positions. And as Casadero, as you mentioned, those would probably be kind of like my A's and like my B's in this race. What does the cat think? Maisie, what do you think? <laughs> There's always got to be one in the background. Like <laughs> literally every time somebody's always got to be doing something. Of course. <laughs> Well, we're here for all the opinions. <laughs> um, I, you mentioned Bran earlier. This was another one that, I mean, talk about a horse that's getting good lately. Just one at Kentucky yeah. Downs um, did defeat Arrest Me Red and uh, Artemis City Limits as well. Uh, this was a race in this turf sprint where I was really interested in Gregorian Chant, who ended up scratching out of there. But um, they had gone head to head a couple of times in California mm -hmm. and then Bran ran a, a really monster race at 11 to one in this turf sprint going the six furlongs, um, his best career buyer speed figure. He's been working very well as well coming into this. Um, but again, it's just so hard to get past uh, a horse like Golden Pal and Highfield Princess and some of these other European horses. Mm -hmm. And then, too, even if we go all the way to the far outside in post-14, Artemis Tiny Limits has, uh, has gotten a little close to Golden Pal, too. I mean, he finished third to him last time out in the Woodford Stakes. He was second to Bran in that turf sprint. Um, he, he had a bunch of wins before that. He was one that I kind of always underestimated on the yeah. New York circuit, but but lately he's improved quite a bit. And looking at some of the price discrepancies um, with what he's done lately, I would say that he's more likely to to hit the you know exacto or the try more so than a lot of these other horses at shorter prices. Although um, with the, with his running style on the outside post, I, I get why he's the he's tough to make. Yeah, he, he is a tough case to make, but with his resume, since he's been here in Kentucky, you can realistically make a chance and he's going to be more than 30 to one. I expect him to go off somewhere around 50 to one, especially with that post. And I mean, it can be done. There was a horse that I really liked last year to finish on the underneath spots. And that was, um, her name is slipping me. It was the female that finished third. That was a California horse. She's retired now and she's in full, but she was 60 to one and she had an outside post and she kind of had a similar running style in Gata. But really this race to me is our top two. And I think everyone is about equal underneath. You just kind of have to find the right pieces to fit in. And that's why I think the turf sprint is such a fun race. And I really like how much attention it has attracted from, you know, those European interests. And I, I think this will be kind of, you know, a race that maybe some Eventually, we could see some more horses from Japan or Hong Kong using this as a prep race going in to Hong Kong before those races, even though it is kind of tough to ship up there. Because um, one thing I've heard, and I've kind of, you know, asked that question of some international people as to why more don't come over for this race, since it is worth a million dollars. It's a grade one. Um, and it's part of like the international sprint races where you kind of can get some extra money bonus wise. Um, you actually 
And if they would change this, I think we would get more international attention. But when you fly from the U.S. to Hong Kong, the layover is in Alaska. Oh, God. And that throws <laughs> so many horses off their game being that cold because I thought Story Liberal tried to do the double, tried to win this race in the Hong Kong Sprint. And I thought he had a good chance because it was a pretty weak, weak race. Um, but he had to stay in Alaska in Anchorage for a day or so. And he just was never able to get equalized after that. So I think that's why we don't see, you know, more than just Europeans in this race. And this is by far the most I've seen in, in here. Well, that would throw me off too. That's such a, I don't want to say random because looking at it geographically, it probably does make sense, but it feels like kind of a random midpoint to be like, you know what, let's go freeze real quick over here. I know. I always wondered why, like, why not California? But I get it. Like, it's kind of like a catty corner shot from Hong Kong to Alaska. But at, at the same time, I mean, that, that just never occurred to me. So, cause there's so many good turf sprinters in Japan that I think would fit the profile of this race so well because they turn over in Japan and they run like on the same side of the track as we do. So I'm like, why do mm -hmm. more Japan sprinters come over there? And it's because they would have to do the layover there before going back home. And I'm like, Oh, makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> wow. That's a fun fact. I would have never yeah. thought of that. <laughs> oh, good to know. Okay. Well, is there anyone else that we haven't talked about that you feel like we need to mention or that you feel like um, deserves a look or anything like that? Or do you feel like we have it covered? I think we pretty much have it covered. One thing that I do want to mention, though, is when you look at some of the horses in this race, um, some of the European names that you see, um, not to get too off topic, but in the juvenile turf sprint coming up uh, the day before on Friday, um, the Platinum Queen in there has beaten a lot of these horses that are in the turf sprint. And she actually won a Breeders' Cup winning grin for the turf sprint, but they let her use it for the juvenile turf sprint because she's two. And she's finished second behind... Highfield Princess. So if you like Highfield Princess, you have to like the Platinum Queen. That is definitely a fair point. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's going to see that she's had success against older company and that mm -hmm. that is why she is the favorite going into a spot mm -hmm. like that. So it all makes sense. All right. Well, Caitlin, thank you for taking the time to talk with me about this Breeders' Cup turf sprint. So great to get your insight on a lot of these international contenders. I know you are also crazy busy with content creation and, and plans for the Breeders' Cup, but I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to seeing you there. And where can everybody find you that wants to keep up with all of your handicapping opinions? I always have all of my handicapping out on Twitter. As you can see, my handle is... I can never get these right. Right there, right there. <laughs> and I'm on Instagram with the same name. I usually post a lot of that stuff on there as well, but you can always find me at Churchill. I will be at the Breeders' Cup and I'm I'm always in Kentucky. So that's where I'm at. All right. Well, great. I look forward to seeing you very soon yeah. at the Breeders' Cup and good luck, everybody.